Australia, the digital ID is already here, I'm sorry to say. However, we have caught it in time. Don't be scared. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how it's already here and how the biometric data plays a role in all of that. Secondly, I'm going to give you steps that I personally took myself to protect my data from this. We're actually in a really unique position right now because it says in the documentation I'm about to go through with you that they are depending on future legislations to pass in order for the digital ID to really work the way that they want it to. So I'm going to go through the information and then the steps. If you want to skip ahead to the steps, just use the timestamps in the description of this video. All right, so I'm going to put my glasses on for this. So the story starts this morning at about 9.30 a.m. when I decided to finally go and delete my MyGov ID account, something that's been on the list for a while. And to do that, I had to sign in. And I saw this at the bottom, using your MyGov ID digital identity. As you can imagine, my heart was starting to pound a little faster at this point. Now, before I go on, I just want to explain the color coding. So the yellow just means something I want to talk to you about. The green is something that I had to actually click on to get to the next page. And you'll see later on that there is a blue highlight for really important things. So the first thing I did was click on what is digital identity. And it takes me to this page. There's a really uh, cringy video there that I'm not going to play that you can play in your own time. But then I clicked on how to create your digital identity. At this point, my heart is really pounding and I wished that there was someone else in the room that I could bounce this off because it felt like it was something I was seeing for the first time. We'd been waiting for this to happen, but I didn't think it would be so subtle and not uh, in your face kind of thing. So what are identity proofing levels? This is where it gets interesting. So there are three levels of the digital identity strengths, I guess you could say, basic, standard, and strong. So I'm not going to go through everything, but I'm going to go through what I consider to be the most crazy things. So um, you need to give, uh, you know, a passport or something like that, which is not that crazy, really. We've given our passport for identity before, but this is really where it gets interesting. Um, you also need to prove that you are the same person as shown on the identity documents by scanning your face with your smart device. You might use this level of identity proofing to access welfare and re other related government services. This really concerns me because by consent, we would be giving them our biometric data of our face, uh, which plays perfectly into any facial recognition software that could come out in the future. So where did I go after that? So now my heart's really pounding and there's no one in the room to share it with. So then I clicked on, and I'll just go through this, all accredited identity apps need to meet the strong rules around privacy, security, fraud control, and risk management. Now, the types of people that have been making these rules over the last three years, I don't really trust. So I don't know who's making all these strong rules. But anyway, so I clicked on trusted digital identity framework. Hmm, what's that? Okay, so this is the trusted digital identity framework. It is an accreditation framework for digital identity services. Okay, let's see what that means. Under the trusted digital identity framework, which is current according to this, um, so basically different organizations can apply to be within the TDIF. And currently the onboarded and accredited providers are only government agencies and government digital identity services. But the word here is currently, that kind of bothers me because it shows that they want to be able to expand the types of companies that can that can work within this digital identity framework and share data back and forth or to the government anyway. Now we have our first blue highlight here. Isn't this exciting? So the Australian government is accrediting a number of businesses under the TDIF as part of the testing and readiness of the Australian government digital identity system to expand beyond the Australian government. This is an exciting new step in the rollout of the digital identity program. Before I move on, I just want to reiterate that they are testing the readiness of the population for the digital identity system so that they can expand it beyond the government, which means private sector. So it is now that we need to have our voices heard. And of course, RDA and so many other organizations, I'm sure will be raising a lot of awareness. So don't worry, we have time. Don't be scared. That's not what this video is about. Okay, so let's continue, shall we? Okay, so you keep scrolling down this page and well, 
So my Gov ID and OCR Labs, which I don't know who they are. Um, this is just a brief informative video, but you can do your own research. Everyone can do their own research. But their uh, verification type is reusable identity, biometric enabled, one-off verification, biometric enabled. What that means is that the identity process to log into that app is obviously a biometric enabled um, login. So they're going to want your biometric data of your face. So I didn't really like that. So anyway, I scrolled down. Uh, okay. So I thought it was strange that you can apply to be a TDIF accreditation. Like the digital ID system isn't even widely accepted or being used at this point, but you can actually apply to be a company that works with the government on this digital ID. Anyway, again, you can read all this stuff yourself. I'm not going to go through too much, but I scrolled all the way down here and then I clicked here, system partners. Hmm. What is that? Shall we see? Okay. So system partners. Um, so of course you can read this yourself. So identity providers help you set up and manage your, your digital identity. If you choose to create and use a digital identity, then your identity provider will be your gateway into the Australian government digital identity system. So you'll be able to use a third party for a digital ID system, it sounds like. The face verification service and document verification service may be used by your identity provider as a way to verify your identity online. My Gov ID is the Australian government's digital identity provider. More identity providers will be onboarded as the system develops. <laughs> Can't wait for that. Identity exchange acts like a switchboard transferring information with your consent, very important words, between relaying parties, identity providers and, and attribute service providers in a way which is secure and respects your privacy. Hmm. Kind of like they respected our privacy of body autonomy. Yeah, I don't really, I don't buy that for a second. Okay, so we got some more blue here. Can't wait to read this. So pending the passage of legislation, the system will expand to allow private sector and state and territory government relaying services to participate in the digital identity system. The Australian government is allowing a number of state and territory government agencies participate to participate in the Australian government digital identity system on a pilot basis as part of our testing of the readiness of the Australian government digital identity system to expand beyond the Australian government. I know it's hard to imagine, but it gets a lot worse. I went to MyGov ID privacy policies. So I'm going to scroll down to the important stuff. All right. So biometric matching. Here we go. The, the thing that you really need to take notice of is we do need your consent for this. That's why we've caught it in time, guys. Right. So the face verification service can measure the biometric information for your facial image. This means measurements or calculations about your physical appearance. Biometric images and photographs are collected as part of the operations of the MyGov ID system and will be managed and destroyed in accordance with the law. Okay, so let's take a breather. Who here trusts the law system? Who here trusts the people that make the laws? In the last three years, the laws have hurt millions of people around the world. So if my biometric data privacy is depending on the law and they are going to act in accordance with the law, private sector companies and government companies broke the law of the land, the constitutional law, over and over again in the last three years. So saying that does not make me feel better at all. All right, so let's get back to business. Unfortunately, this page gets worse. This may include disclosures to other digital identity system participants, such as the Digital Transformation Agency in their capacity as the System Oversight Authority or Services Australia in their capacity as the System Interim Oversight Authority. I mean, who are those people anyway? And of course, they're government run probably. So yeah, we will not share your personal information without your consent, which is good, unless, well, well, your personal information will be stored securely in Australia, like Westpac and Medibank, really secure. We also share personal information with our contracted service providers such as our telecommunication and cloud service partners to the extent that is necessary to provide you with MyGov ID services. Who decides what's necessary? Now, this is the worst part. We will not use or disclose your personal information for any other purposes unless you have consented to, which is fine, or we are required or authorized to do so under 
an Australian law or court tribunal. So again, who here trusts the Australian law or court system? Yeah, so I was a criminal according to Australia uh, a year and a half ago, and they tried to get all my data as well. Luckily, they couldn't because, um, well, I said no. But the point is, if if they request it from the digital ID identity providers, they that would be a reason to share all of your data. Anyway, so that's the information. Of course, you can go and read it all yourself, like I said. But now we're going to talk about the steps that you can take right now, today, to ensure that you can protect your data as much as possible. Okay, so here we go. In the description of the video, there is a link to a web page on Reignite Democracy Australia where I go through the steps. So I'm not going to go into too, too much detail because they really are all there. But step one, you've got to delete both of the apps that you have, MyGovID and, ATO, and, and the ATO. If you know your login details, then all you need to do is sign in and actually close your account. Um, if you don't know your login details, call that number there, which is what I did, um, and they will actually have to delete your account anyway. And the, the operator will say, oh, you can create a new account now. And of course, the point is, do not create a new account, okay? Then there is another step that you can take, which I think is really important. And all the details are on that website. So definitely go there. And this is exactly what I have done. But basically, I think now is the time for us to actually assert our consent or non-consent of what happens to our data. Because the legislations are not in place, yet to totally uh, disregard our consent. Uh, we have actually have an opportunity now and at least we can put it on record. So on that website, I explained exactly how I did a freedom of information request uh, with my gov to ensure that they don't have any of my documents and, and to delete or, or destroy any documentation that they do have or send it to me. I also sent uh, an email to uh, another email address that's all in there as well. Now, obviously, I don't know if this works. Obviously, if they tell me they destroy my data, do I know that they actually destroyed it? No, of course not. But the thing is, it's on record that that's what I asked. And one day, I don't know if it's going to be soon. I don't know if it's in 10 years or 20 years or five years. I don't know. But one day, karma is going to come back around. And people like you and I, we're going to get justice for all the things that have happened. And this is going to be part of it forcing people to get a digital ID so that every private sector company uh, knows exactly everything about you, it's not okay. And we have to fight back. If it works or not is besides the point. It raise, raises awareness and it puts things on record and that is enough. So guys, get onto it now before it's too late. It actually doesn't take that long at all. So um, I'm going to see you for the next step of this campaign because uh, this is going to be this is going to be a heavy campaign, so I'll see you next time.